What's up guys, Rush here and welcome to another episode of Skeptics Say the Dumbest Things. The video we're looking at today features a chap called Charlie Kirk, who I hadn't heard of until I started researching this video, but from what I can tell he's an American conservative media personality. In this video he's asked a question by an audience member about climate change, and what ensues is, well, why don't we see for ourselves? Final question will be here. This is the last question. Sorry, we got, we got it. Sorry, okay. thank you. Uh, yeah, first of all, sorry for laughing when you were talking about no, the environment, because okay. uh, it's just completely ridiculous for you to, to suggest that we're... Can, we're can, can, can you prove made... to me carbon dioxide is the only reason why the atmosphere is heating? It's not the only reason necessarily. Also, That's not just carbon dioxide, because there's methane and there's a, a lot of other uh, gases. Greenhouse gases are causing uh, climate change. Like, this is a huge driver in climate change and... Do you like, think sunspots have any sort of contributing factor? Okay. Where shall we start? First of all, no one is claiming that CO2 is the only driver of climate change, just that it's the main one at the moment. There are many things which can cause the climate to change, including changes in Earth's orbit, solar cycles, or volcanic eruptions. But when we look at all the possible drivers of climate change operating on the planet today, changes in greenhouse gases, and in particular, changes in the concentration of CO2, are by far the most significant. Nothing else comes close. Which brings me on to Charlie's next point, sunspots. Sunspots don't directly affect the climate. They're basically cool patches on the sun's surface and they're an indication of solar activity in the same way that spots on your brother's face might be an indication of pubescent hormones, poor hygiene, or imminent teen angst. Now, obviously, while sunspots don't directly affect the climate, solar activity does. And this is probably what Charlie means, probably. So is the sun responsible for recent warming? Well, since the 1970s, solar activity has remained relatively stable and it's even declined a bit. And yet despite this, over the same period of time, global warming has accelerated. Now I understand that Charlie's not a scientist, but I think even he would be hesitant to claim that a decrease in solar activity would result in global warming. Not to a point where we can say that, that so, it's not a So why is it that in northern Scotland back in the 1700s they had a Mediterranean climate? What made that change? Ah yes, because we've all heard of that delicious Scottish wine and those beautiful highland olive groves. Maybe that warm Mediterranean air is why they started wearing kilts. No, Scotland never had a Mediterranean climate. Plus, the 1700s were at the tail end of the period known as the Little Ice Age. So, you know, it definitely wasn't warmer back then. The climate fluctuates naturally. Oh, it the, does. The, okay, so we okay. admit that. Got it. Yes, yes. This so is outside true. of human emissions, that no, no, no. I am so sick of people citing past examples of natural climate change as if it disproves man-made global warming. I've even dedicated an entire video to it, which you can find up here. But science aside, it doesn't even make logical sense. If you think it does, here's an analogy. Imagine you walk into work one day. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. Nothing is out of place. But then, as you approach your office, you notice bloodstains on the ground. Nervously, you walk up the stairs, and there, in the middle of the floor, is your boss, riddled with gunshot wounds and bullet casings lying nearby. Now, until this point, all the evidence strongly suggests that your boss has died rather violently. But then, genius that you are, you remember the wisdom of Charlie Kirk. Yes, your boss has died today, but you can recall many occasions when people have died naturally in the past. And so, obviously, you conclude that since people die naturally all the time, your boss's death is probably also natural and nothing to worry about. Makes sense, right? If you think that's an insanely stupid deduction, then congratulations, you understand why pointing out examples of past, natural climate change is not a good rebuttal to man-made global warming. Just like the bloodstains, gunshot wounds and bullet casings in our story, we have multiple lines of evidence which indicate that current climate change is not natural. Which leads us nicely onto Charlie's next point. Humans are causing climate change. We, we know this. The evidence shows it. And you're being ignorant, honestly. Okay, so what, what evidence are you talking about? IPCC climate change report. So 97% of scientists agree that one? Yes. Is science a democracy? Do, we vote, on, do we vote on gravity? Okay, so I don't know if this is deliberate or simply a lack of understanding on Charlie's part, but the IPCC reports are not surveys of scientists voting in what they believe in. They are a presentation, a summary of the most up-to-date scientific research on climate change. <laughs> we reach consensus. 
the way the scientific so process is, we get evidence, we get evidence, we get evidence and then we... a consensus we... on Newton's second law? Yes, there is a consensus on those things. But I don't think that means what Charlie seems to think it means, or at least it's a little more complicated than he's making out. While it's true that several surveys have found that there's something like a near 100% consensus of opinion among climate scientists on man-made global warming, it's kind of a moot point as far as scientific inquiry goes. Appealing to opinions is not a scientifically sound argument. As Charlie rightly, kind of, points out, science isn't interested in opinion or belief, it is only interested in observable, measurable evidence. So is a scientific consensus irrelevant? Well, no. Because a scientific consensus is more than just the collective opinions of the majority of scientists, it is a consensus of evidence. And if you're watching this, Charlie, a lot of that evidence is nicely presented in the IPCC reports. You should check them out sometime. And then Do we have a consensus we, on Newton's second law? Here's the uh, problem. I want to know yes, the three. Yes, there's consensus. The, no, the it's 100% because it's provable. No, no, you can't prove it. Charlie, nothing in science is provable. I know, it seems counterintuitive, because science is often taught as if it's a bunch of immutable facts that we have perfect certainty in. But that's really not the case. For one thing, the concept of proof is mathematical, not scientific. And for another, nothing in science ever has 100% certainty. Not even so-called facts and the physical laws that Charlie just mentioned. We can't know for sure that they apply everywhere in the universe. And actually, we know that many don't. For example, Newton's laws cease to apply at the subatomic level. In short, everything we think we know about the universe could be wrong. That doesn't mean that it is wrong, or that it's even likely to be wrong, but the fact that there is the tiniest possibility that it might be means that we can never have 100% certainty on anything. Ultimately, science doesn't deal in certainty. It deals in quantified uncertainty, probabilities, and it draws informed conclusions from the available evidence. The more evidence we have, the more we can reduce that uncertainty, and the more confident we can be in our conclusions. And we have a whole ton of evidence that anthropogenic emissions of CO2 are causing global warming. I want to know what the 3% believe. You know why? Because usually the 3% dissenting opinion against the majority is the one that we should listen to the most. That's called the scientific method. What? No, that's really not the scientific method. Charlie's right that if 97% of scientists believe something, that doesn't make it scientifically valid. But if that's true, then 3% of scientists believing something definitely doesn't make it scientifically valid, and it certainly doesn't make it more valid than what the 97% believe. What makes something scientifically valid is the weight of evidence and the weight of evidence alone. I'm pro-science. You're pro-mobocracy. You're pro-hysteria. You're pro-panic. And this is how the anti-science propaganda machine controls the narrative. They make any discussion of even the most basic scientific matter, like the fact, and it is a fact, that rising CO2 levels can, will, and are causing warming into one about values and politics. As long as Charlie can convince his followers to associate what are essentially moderate, nuanced, and crucially evidenced positions on climate change with panic, hysteria, and mob rule, they'll never be able to engage with the issue in an open-minded way. You'll state a scientific fact, and they'll hear a call to end America, democracy, and freedom. And by the way, you're completely ignoring the positive effects of a changing climate. For example, the world has never been greener. Did you know that? Did you ever know that we have more grassland and more farmland able to be used for consumption than ever before? Did you know that less people live in extreme cold than ever before? I mean, yeah, but, and I know this might be hard to fathom for Charlie and his supporters, global warming has resulted in more people living under extreme heat than ever before. And while the planet has got greener, climate change is increasing water stress in many of the most agriculturally productive regions of the planet, which, you know, isn't so good. And this whole climate fluctuation nonsense, we're only dealing with a hundred year data set. We know that the, world, that the climate naturally fluctuated as if, as you admitted, very freely and openly. So why would we hinder America's energy dominance around something that has highly questionable data? And the final thing I'll say is this, which I'm, at what cost are you willing to go? Like what, what, at what cost are you willing to shut down our country for something that you consider to be verifiable? So first of all, equating past natural climate fluctuations with modern warming is totally disingenuous. We may only have a hundred years or so of instrumental data, but we have thousands of years of data from ice and sediment cores, which clearly indicates that modern warming is nothing like anything in the recent geological past. Charlie might assert that the data is questionable, but, well, it's really not. 
Sure, there are uncertainties and margins of error, as there are in all science, but the fact remains that multiple, separate lines of evidence from fields as far apart as geology and astrophysics all converge on the same conclusion, that man-made emissions of CO2 are warming the planet. It's also worth noting the trajectory of Charlie's argument here. So far, he's implied that current climate change might be natural, that there's no proof that anthropogenic emissions of CO2 are driving it, that scientific consensus is meaningless, and now we've got to climate change is good and there's too much uncertainty to know anything for sure. All have one thing in common, and that's that they lead to the conclusion that we shouldn't do anything about our emissions. And from my experience, this is the primary driver of most skeptics' line of thinking. Rather than it being about genuine scientific inquiry, it is driven first and foremost by objections to the perceived solutions to climate change. They start with the conclusion that we should do nothing and work backwards from there. Worse, the proposed solutions to climate change are framed as a threat to America itself. They're dangerous, oppressive, an attack on liberty and freedom. Charlie's tapping into emotive areas which are going to resonate strongly with his fan base. It's a narrative which creates an us versus them group mentality and generates feelings of fear and anger towards anyone who publicly entertains the idea that man-made emissions might be driving warming. It almost sounds like, how can I put it? You're pro-mobocracy. You're pro-hysteria. You're pro-panic. Yeah, that sounds about right. Do you like that Trump has finally lowered CO2 emissions for the first time in 30 years? Has he? Has Trump done that? Yes. Or, ha or has the country so done that? So I'm or sure Donald Trump can count on your vote this November because the environment matters to you. The future's in our hands, right? Donald Trump has done what Democrats did it. And there it is. It's not about science. It's barely about policy. It's us versus them. Republican versus Democrat. True American patriots versus everyone else. Emission reductions are bad, but our guy did it, so that's great. I'm not even going to comment on who did what for emission reductions, because guess what? When it comes to the scientific reality of climate change, it doesn't frickin' matter. This channel is about science, and I refuse to be drawn into the narrative that Charlie is pushing, that climate change is a left-wing issue. It's not. It's a scientific one first, and only once we accept that science can we even begin to consider debating policy. If you pick and choose your science based on your political affiliation, then you're being neither rational nor scientific. So I'll leave you with the words of the poor chap who started this video in the first place. I urge you, I urge you all to just look into the evidence by yourself. Go home, read a little bit about it. Just do that. I agree. We should just do that. But too many won't because they buy into the polarised narrative that Charlie and others like him have spun. A narrative which causes them to become immediately combative when discussing climate change. It's not a scientific issue for them. It's a fight. And in order to even begin to address that, we have to reframe the discussion. Keep it nuanced, keep it scientific, and resist the boxes they'll try and put you in. Do these things, and we might, just might, improve the discourse around climate change and create a healthier, more informed, and more scientific culture in the process. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye. Imagine you walk into work one day. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, nothing. Oh, there's, a, there's an actual pigeon singing. How convenient.